It amazes me how time plays with art to create new forms. I have never considered myself an artist. I am someone who looks at the efforts of man and nature with perplexity in order to change the forms of things. Centuries ago, this adobe and stone skeleton was most likely a church that later would become a mosque. Then man most likely abandoned the mosque to its fate so that it alone would decide to embody this kind of formless nothing. But it is now that it does not seem to have any purpose when its presence is essential. There is something beautiful, perversely beautiful, in the destruction of things built by man, especially when this is a slow destruction, a destruction that is just a change in shape, a gradual recreation with wind and water as man's fellow conspirators in the task of reinventing the landscape. Karma is the gateway to present-day Nubia. For centuries, Nubia and Bilad al-Sud, which means the land of the blacks, were confused with one another. Nubia was a kind of transition across the river towards this mysterious space given to fantastic tales. Today, geography doesn't make concessions to fables, nor does it allow for doubtful territories. Today, it is known and affirmed that Nubia begins in the third waterfall, which is very close to the town of Karma and ends in Aswan, located in Egypt, on the other side of the border. In Karma, as well as in the rest of Nubia, being an artist is nothing extraordinary. They say that there is a painter, a musician, and a poet in every household. Each town has its own distinctive colors and its own concept of aesthetics. In Karma, they have become specialized in the art of decorating motor vehicles. In the middle of the street, Painters offer themselves in order to give form to the whims of the owners of vans, motorcycles, and buses. They usually change the drawing every year. Any important experience for the client, whether it be a wedding or a profitable business, is a good excuse to place the vehicle in the hands of the painter. Nubian architecture is probably the heir to what popular Egyptian architecture was more than 3,000 years ago. This is how the homes on the plains along the river must have been like. It's an architecture of sensual and cheerful forms, of colors that induce relaxation and curiosity. Nubian towns are clean and tidy, simple and neighboring like their inhabitants. The Nubian people are known for being friendly and hospitable, hard workers, and especially attached to the river. In the last few years, hundreds of men have been leaving their lands to emigrate to Saudi Arabia or Egypt. The entire family does not usually go. The family unit, the women and children, remain at home. The men go for long periods of time and send money to their families. They only return on occasion for celebrations. The absence of the men has made Nubia a territory dominated by women. They are the ones who keep the household and culture afloat. Most of the men who are still in the towns are either elderly or adolescent. The old men live with their memories of better times. 
the youths only think about escaping. This emptiness is not new. In Sahel, the men have always been absent, either at war or on a caravan, dreaming that there is a solution to their contradictions far away in the distance. The women are the ones who really belong to this land. The ones who have sweated and broken their backs to make this land inhabitable for thousands of years. The ones who forever and ever will watch their men disappear with distant eyes. I once read that there is still the same amount of water on the earth as when the atmosphere was created, the same atmosphere we breathe today. Trapped in the polar glaciers, floating adrift in the clouds, resting in the oceans, or running down the streams and rivers, I have the feeling that the same water has passed through here hundreds of times with the same attitude as someone who knows the path that leads home. The Soleb Temple is a work of Amenhotep, son of the brilliant architect who built the Temple of Luxor. It was built to commemorate the jubilee of the pharaoh Amenophis III. It represents one of the most beautiful periods of Egyptian art. It is dedicated to the god Amun, but the image of the pharaoh is also worshipped inside. Many details suggest the advent of the solar theology that would be imposed on the Nile Valley with the successor of Amenophis, Akhenaton the god of the sun. The temple was consecrated by the pharaoh himself, accompanied by the court and his family. Soleb is a splendid affirmation of the cosmic power of the pharaoh, of his desire to put order in the chaos of the universe by worshiping the sun. Art is nothing more than this, a way of organizing the chaos, or rather, the illusion of this momentary ephemeral order, an illusion that calms the perverse mind of the artist. For a few minutes, a few seconds, on the surface of a limited space, man thinks he understands the world. But replacing the works of the gods is a big mistake. Thank you. 